The next to retire is going to be Terrence Crawford, and he's going to stay retired. He's not going to feign it. Um, I think that he's going to have probably one more big fight this year, and then I think that's the last that we're going to see. We're going to see of Ter of the great Terrence Crawford. Welcome to Sparring Session. I am the ref, judge, commissioner. Some say I even take donations. George Jakovic, we got the champs. Paulie Malinaji and Chris Algieri, these guys are going to debate over four topics, four rounds. But there was a new champion in our last sparring session. Chris Algieri, you broke a three-fight losing streak to eke out a close decision. How you feeling, new champ? Feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like I'm going to I'm gonna keep this train going and keep it, keep it rolling. All right. Well, you know, um, you know how you know how 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 mentally focused I am. I I thought I was the champ. I I completely forgot that Chris actually won. So you know what? He's, he's mind, still rocked. He's still rocked my, from the in, last in one. In my mind, I have that positivity going. I've erased. I've erased that negativity that might have been there. Well, I, I want to play a little clip, Chris. Um, this is from the last sparring session. This was before the sparring session started. You were, remember you were on a three fight losing streak, and this is your little rant. This is what you had to say. I think a lot of uh, a lot of questionable calls, questionable rounds, questionable sparring sessions. I don't complain. I get things done. So you know, this guy puts in a commission. He wants to get oh, rounds overturned. I want to get a new ref and a new judge because the things are just not going the way that they should be. I mean, this you know what, Chris? That's spoken like a guy who's lost three in a row and the last one very convincingly. So, so Chris, you wanted yeah, me yeah, replaced. Then you, then you gave him. You then you gave him it. You, you gave I him a get, win. That's the thing, Paulie. He he earned it. Listen, we. After the sparring session, we wanted to suspend the commission wanted to spend suspend Chris, but then we realized we wouldn't have a show if we if he Chris got suspended. So Chris, you wanted a <laughs> You're new turning me into the bad boy now. <laughs> you, Chris, you wanted me replaced. My drink, my drink shot up in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I had to spit it out. I'm drinking my bad. <laughs> Chris, you want to be replaced. Let me wipe it. The, let me wipe it down the drain. This is still <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Paulie. All right, listen. Well, let's wait till Paulie comes. We'll, we'll go over the topics. We'll get him up there. Um, Paulie, I'm sure you can still hear, but today's topics are the greatest at 140 pounds ever. 140 pounds today, best division in the sport. Second round, since it's the thing now to retire, who's gonna be next to retire? The third one is a good one. It's a fantasy fight, and I can't believe these guys never fought. Eric Morales and Juan Manuel Marquez, they're like the only guys that never fought in their era. And finally, round four is going to be who is the most exciting fighter in the sport today. So those are your four topics. Uh, hopefully, Paulie has covered. Uh, but Chris, you were you were pretty critical of me before we started the last one, yet you still won the decision. So. You know, I was I was inspired by the late great Apollo Creed, Carl Weathers. You know, Carl Weathers in terms of you know uh, wh who he was in, in the Rocky series. You know, he's a very boisterous guy. He's very aggressive. He's a control new boss. You know, he's always always had his suits and ties on, and he got the, he got he got things done. And that's I was I was inspired by him. So I brought a little Apollo Creed to the last barn well, session. Well, in, in honor of Apollo Creed, you history chunk today. You history chunk. You history. <laughs> All right. You know what? We're gonna rain that. We're gonna start this. Sparring session right now. Paul, you you heard the you, you heard the four topics. You see the four topics on the screen. Any questions, guys, on the topics? Uh, da, da. And now when you say who next to retire, are we talking like a real retirement? Or are we talking uh, one of these 13-day? Well, Chris, um, it's the thing fainting. now. Boxers yeah. seem to retire. So who's gonna be next? Who's gonna okay. be next to retire? Teofimo did it, Shakur did it. So, you know, it's a hypothetical, but it seems to be the rage in boxing. People retire. Listen, it, 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 if if some of these calls don't go my way, it might be me. So let's uh, let's be. All right, well, hey, listen. When when we get there, we get there. But Chris, you are the defending champion, so you can either start or defer to Pauly to start. Uh, I'm going to defer to the former champ. Okay, so Pauly's going to start. What's the All right, uh, Pauly? Round mm -hmm. one, 140 pounds today. It's the best division in the sport. We're going to talk about who you guys think is the greatest 140 pounder of all time. Ring the bell. Round one. Paulie starts it. Aaron Pryor is the best 140 pounder of all time. Aaron the Hawk Pryor. Bring pace, exciting, exciting style, take on all comers, 
was trying to, you had, you had guys who didn't want nothing to do with him, even outside his own weight class, was what would have been willing to fight Sugar Ray Leonard. Ray Leonard didn't want to fight him. The guy would, was absolutely a molar. A molar with skill would take would, would make you totally uncomfortable. Punching power? What punching power? Alex Arguello made him look up and look right back at him and going, going, got, got right back on top of him. Now, what did the, what's in the bottle help? I don't know. We'll never know that for sure. But we'll tell you what. Aaron Pryor was an absolute marauder in there, man. He was uh and 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 he was must see TV. He he kept punching. He's the kind of guy that you 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 want on TV, exciting style. He was a winner. Um and uh he beat your heroes. I mean, Alexa Arguello, when he beat Alexis Arguello, you know, he he broke a lot of hearts. Uh, the explosive thin man uh, just couldn't couldn't deal with it. And uh, you know what? Arguello himself admitted after the second time, I just stayed down. Break. Break. He, he, he broke my heart. And <laughs> Arguello is one of my favorite fighters of all time. And, and, you know, both those fights actually took a lot out of me. Took a lot more out of Alexis. But, yeah, I can't, I can't disagree. Aaron Pryor is the best 140-pounder of all time. The only guys you could even think about mentioning, because uh, 140 is a weird division. It's a lot of times it's kind of like a, a jump off division. Guys go from 135 and they're in, they're onto the money at 147. But Aaron Pryor, man, at, at his best, he was he was unbeatable. Everything that, that the champ said. Um, the only other guys you could really compare were like Chavez, but Chavez was losing to Meldrick Taylor, and a lot of the things Meldrick Taylor in terms of the hand speed combination punching, Aaron could do too, and Aaron hit hard too. That was another thing. Aaron had power. And then Antonio Cervantes, who Aaron Pryor already beat. So it, 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 Pryor, until the substance abuse issues outside of the ring, the guy was unbeatable. And at 140, I think he was a perfect compact size for that weight class. I don't think, I don't know how great he could have been if he moved up to 47. Obviously, he probably couldn't make 135, especially later in his career. But at 140, man, you can't beat that guy. Great. And I and I also think like 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 Chris said with the uh, with the, it's in between weight class sometimes you know there were other guys that were very good uh, like like the champ said but you know I Koto had for example five or six defenses almost all of them were by knockout only against me he didn't have a knockout defense um you know there was uh, uh you know several different Wolfer but he has won his first world title at 140 you know but guys didn't hang around long enough out Pryor really uh, set the tone when you think of 140 pound world champions you think of Aaron Pryor right away he's the guy that really sticks out in your mind the most. Break. And if you really if you really break him down, technically, stylistically, attributes, everything, I mean, he had it all hand speed, combination, punching, endurance, um, even without the special bottle, the guy had a great, great endurance and his chin was ridiculous. You mentioned the Arguello fight when he got his head literally knocked all the way back to it, back to his feet and then came right back and, and, and blast Arguello out. And with the salvos that he was able to muster late in the fight to get him out of there, I mean, the, the guy had it all. You got someone like that in front of you. How do you how do you how do you beat that? He's nonstop and he can punch you and he's got a chin. There's our bell. Well, God, that's a tough one. You know what? We we should change these rules because the ugly Buddha wrote in that he loves the sparring sessions, but you should make a change to the rules. You should be required to pick different answers. It's tough to score, and I don't like to score even not, rounds. Oh, not only that, you gotta give me that round because the champ deferred to me and then still picked my answer. You can't no, defer. To I, I, listen, listen I did this. I did you have this, the option. Listen, when you have the I option to pick first and take fire for yourself. Strategically, you there is no argument. He's the best. Like, guys, he, 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 then you he, gotta go first. So listen, if if I'm gonna go, then I'm gonna be like, oh well, yeah, Chavez, but he, he wouldn't beat Chavez. Chavez wouldn't beat him. I think when you you know the, 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 the certain the certain questions, show. certain you, questions aren't debatable. Show. I don't even go to college. You went to college. They tell you when you do a debate, you're All right. going to topic and defend it even if you don't this believe guy, it. When this, the, when this guy, when this guy wants to agree with me, he gets rounds. When I, when I now, now the other way around. This guy wants to now. I agree Again, now, against my wrong. better judgment. That's an even round ten ten. That had to be an even round. round. It's an even round ten ten. All right, let's get into round two. So, Chris, you're going to start this round. Uh, Tyson Fury's done it. Teofimo Lopez has done it. Um. Shakur Stevenson has done it. Everyone's retiring, and then they're coming back. So this is a fun one. Who do you guys think is going to be next to retire? Oh. Chris, you're going to start this round. Round my two, soul, ring the bell. My soul is irritated with the judging. Even my soul is irritated with the judging. Wow. Man special. Keep balling hey, up. Every, 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 every notice he's got his peds out, out in the open. The, the, <laughs> the balls on this guy. He's not even hiding it anymore. <laughs> Caffeine galore. Caffeine sugar. Right. Oh, guy, what up my nose? It went on that's, the floor. That's, you know, that's 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 the stack right there. It's caffeine and sugar. He's 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 juiced up now. Yeah. All right, Chris. Let's get ready to ring that bell. Who's next to retire? Ring the bell to start round two. 
This, this is going to be a hot take. It's something I said at the end of last year on, on my podcast, actually. The next to retire is going to be Terrence Crawford, and he's going to stay retired. He's not going to feign it. Um, I think that he's going to have probably one more big fight this year. And then I think that's the last that we're going to see. We're going to see of Terrence, of the great Terrence Crawford. Um, most likely, you know, he's going to retire undefeated. Um, if he gets the Canelo fight, maybe not. But regardless, I think if he gets the Canelo fight, uh, the amount of money he's going to make in that fight and the history of, of going up so many weight classes is, is going to solidify him. Um, and then in terms of if he doesn't get that fight and if he can't get another meaningful fight, you can you can see the frustration around him and what's going on and how difficult it seems that he's trying, you know, out there trying to get these fights and get these matchups. And you just can't get guys in the ring with him. He can't get the fights that he wants in terms of being big enough, um, you know, which is in his, in, in his mind or whatever. But I, I don't think we're going to see Terrence Crawford fight in 2025. Interesting. You know what I'm going to say? Alexander Usyk. He's going to lose to Tyson Fury. He's going to retire in May. So he's going to retire sooner than Terrence Crawford. He's going to be next to retire. He's going to be next to retire. And uh, and he doesn't. He's not a game player. He's a serious guy. But I think that he's going to realize that you know there's there's probably nowhere else to go in the heavyweight division. He can't you know win the titles, uh, get them back, whatnot. You know Fury's just too big for him. Uh, Usyk's done a great job in the heavyweight division, but with a guy this big who's now owning all the titles. It's going to be very, very difficult. Of course, you could end up with Tyson Fury retiring again. Don't get me wrong. That guy could retire every other week, you know. But but uh, I, I see Alexander Usyk not winning the fight in May. Uh, even though Fury's coming off of a bad performance, I think he's uh, he gets extra motivated, ultra motivated, plays these mind games, and eventually there's just too much to deal with. Uh, but that's a different topic. I, I think coming off of that, I think Alexander Usyk sees that, okay, you know, I've accomplished a lot, uh, gold medals, world championships in, in two weight classes. I, I think that's it. Great. Usyk's a good one, but if he loses, it's going to be a rematch, and that's going to push it back to the end of the year, most likely. So I still, I'm still sticking with Terence Crawford. I think that if he gets that fight, he's going to fight by September, and if he doesn't, then he's going to retire. So uh, I think Terence is going to retire before Usyk. Usyk's going to have that two fight. He's, he's not going to pass up that money on the rematch. That's huge, life changing money. And then he might go home to Ukraine and have like a like a send off fight. Um, you know what would have been a good one, actually, uh, Lomachenko. Lomachenko would have been a good one, because if he wins this title and they lose one more time this year, he's going to be done this year, too. Um, but I'm sticking with Terrence Crawford. I, I think that's the hottest take. Great. It's this year. You said who's going to retire next, okay? I said Usyk is next, okay? All of them could retire this year. I said Usyk is next. That's right. The, the question is... Yeah, but then I said Terrence is going to retire before him. Okay. That's next. All right, so they, they, they could all retire, but Usyk is next. That's my pick. All right? That's my pick. Usyk is next. Doesn't matter. They could all retire in 2024. But Usyk is next. Then None of them will fight in 2025. But Usyk is going to retire before the other two. That's my pick. All right. There's our bell. So this is the tough part of being a judge because I, I don't think either man is going to retire, but then I have to take into account who gave the more compelling argument. And, and what do I think? And I'm going to have to go Pauly 10-9 on that one, Chris. I, I don't think he Terrence is going to retire. He just I don't threw think, all of them. I don't. I, I think Terrence is going to stick I, I, around. I, I, I doubled down. Watch, 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 watch. Well, listen. What, when when what's when, what's when, when Crawford retires first, I'm then I'm then I'm actually going to send in my first petition to actually Crawford's get around. going to wait for the Canelo fight. He's not going to well, retire. Guess what? Guess what, guys? You know, Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo Lopez is one of the guys that retired. But guess what? He loves Provox TV. Let's hear what he has to say about Provox. I like that flowing. What's up, everybody? It's Teofimo Lopez, The Takeover, and you're watching Pro Box TV on the Boxing Channel. Let's go. Man, guys, Friday night, it is going down. You guys are going to be on the on the mic calling a great card. Got a dueling card with ESPN, but Pro Box TV has it all. We talked about this, guys, the other day. You got our main event. We got two guys ranked in the top 10. We got two 18-year-old kids looking to make a mark. We've got veterans. Chris, Pauly. We've got it all on Pro Box Friday, February 16th. We got undefeateds versus undefeateds. We got head-to-head matchups and, you know, good fighters and great fights. You know, the, if, if you've tuned into Pro Box TV before, you know what you get on, on our Wednesday Night Fight Series. This is a special Wednesday Night Fight Series on Friday night because Valentine's Day, uh, The you know, we didn't want to have you guys missing our fights because you got to be with your wives. So, you know what? We'll, get you, we'll do a Friday. We're we'll head with top rank. It's a good show. All right. Looks like we got to get in a round three quick. We only have a certain amount of time to do these. Chris, you're, you're down by one. Paulie's starting round three. This is a fantasy fight that I, I can't believe never happened. I mean, everybody fought, and we're coming up on, I think, a 24-year anniversary of when Morales and Barrera first fought. 
24 years ago in February. So, Paul, you're going to start this one. Eric Morales, the great El Terrible. Eric Morales versus Juan Manuel Marquez. Who would win that fantasy fight? Ring the bell, start round three, Paulie. I think Marquez would win it. I think he's uh, more fundamentally uh, disciplined. And uh, I, I know when it comes to Mexican rivalries, they end up going to war. Like but for me, Barrero was a bit more fundamental than Morales. Not that Morales is awkward, but he just has that long, lanky frame. And sometimes he gets a little wide with his shots and whatnot. Uh, but you still saw a great trilogy with with those two as well, and then you know they went back and forth. So I do think there's a the, the the it's compelling because the emotion of the Mexican fighters will make them brawl more, and Morales can get in there as well. But I feel like Marquez has more uh, better weapons at his disposal. He's 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 got better balance. Uh, the combination punches are shorter. Um, he just uh, I think overall he just uh, is is a better fighter than 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 Morales. Morales, Morales was getting out boxed by guys like Junior Jones, if you remember when 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 he stopped Junior, you know. So so he has trouble with technical guys, and I feel like uh, Juan Manuel Marquez uh, is is would be too technical and would be able to keep it disciplined. Even though the Mexican in him would would go to war at times, I, I just think he'd have more more. Great. Bots I, I'm gonna quote Morales. It took you four fights to land a lucky punch against Pacquiao. I didn't need four fights to beat him, and he's right. I think I think. Um, the fights with with Barrera were very telling, but I believe Barrera was able to they were able to get under each other's skin quite a bit, and I think Morales got him out of his out of his game a little bit because of that. I don't think Marquez was going to be would be able to get Morales to come out of his shell in quite the same way, and to make him make the mistakes that he made in those Barrera fights, get dragged into those wars that he had. Um, Morales was excellent on the outside. Marquez's best asset was his ability to combination punch for counters. Very difficult to do. Haven't seen many guys be able to do it the way that he did it. Um, but I don't think Morales would, would take that bait. He was long enough. He would fight from the outside enough. And I disagree with you on the balance. Marquez, a lot of times, because he was such an overthrower at times, would fall off balance into shots. I think I would be perfect for Morales in terms of his ability to use his jabs, keep him at length, and land that big right hand high and low. I don't know, man. Morales, you really look at at, at, at his skill set and his technique. All right, so you, even if Marquez falls in at, at times, you, Morales is a fall in. All of a sudden, Morales fell in more. Morales falls in all over the place, too. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I got Marquez. I got Marquez in this one. Uh, I hope Marquez responded to Morales' answer by saying at least he didn't quit against Pacquiao because by the, by the end, Morales sat sat down, looked at his corner, and shook his head and said, I'm done with this guy. I'm not I'm, I'm getting up off this count. Marquez never had to do that. So if we're going to compare common opponents, we can go that route as well. Uh, Marquez could also be an argument that he could won all those Pacquiao fights and get the decision. Break. And we're talking about, again, when we do fantasy matchup, we're talking about guys at their best. Eric Morales at his best beats Juan Manuel Marquez. I know, I know I'm going to get, I'm going to get raked over half of the fans in, in, in this, but Morales is one of those guys. He's just, I mean, he had everything, the balls, the technique. And, and listen, he fell in, like I said, with, with the Barrera fight because he was getting over aggressive and getting out of his, out of his comfort zone because he was fucking so pissed at Barrera. Marquez would not be able to get under his skin that way. I'm sticking with Morales, man. That's, that's the guy. All time right. El Terrible. There's our bell. That this would be, this would be an amazing fight. Mm -hmm. I, I I really yeah. don't know who who would win it because you know Morales beat Barrera the fight. Um, he beat Pacquiao. Morales beat Pacquiao the first time they fought. So it's a compelling one. But then I have to think, hmm, if I give the round to Chris and run into Juan Manuel Marquez at Pro Box, he might be mad at me and could hurt. He didn't quit. He didn't quit against Pacquiao. He didn't quit. I mean, the Morales in the third fight. At I their mean, best. He wasn't I mean, as play for Mar Pac down as So this this is a this is a this is a tough one. This is a tough one to score. Um but my heart my heart tells me that Juan Manuel Marquez would win this fight. Oh dude. Yep. Champion. Okay, so now so then people complain. People I complain can, that you gotta go the other way. You gotta go the other way. The championship, the championship. Reel it in. See, 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 rules, rules for thee, not for me. Apparently, I can smell it. I can smell hey, listen. it. Fuck is cooking. The the defending champ is on the ropes. We got some drama. We're gonna let Tio Pimo Lopez. I'm, my argument take us was way more the fourth compelling. Round. Tio. Way more compelling. He quit. About, he quit against Pacquiao. He quit. My argument is way more compelling. What's up, everybody? It's Tio Pimo Lopez, the Takeover, and you're watching Pro Box TV on the Boxing Channel. Let's go. Friday night fights. Wednesday night fights on a Friday. That keeps messing me up. But Pro Box, February 16th. Chris, you didn't get to speak last time, but you got to be excited about this card. Dueling cards with ESPN. But we have got a great card on the 16th, Chris. 
No, awesome, awesome matchups. Um, our main event's going to be a burner, man, barn burner. Um, for, the, for I know a lot of people probably don't know these guys. Listen, we've been watching them. We know these guys. They can really fight. They bring a lot to the table. They're both coming to win. This is, as as usual, we've got a true 50-50 fight. We do not have A-sides when we fight, in, uh, in our main events especially. Uh, but really, we got two, three main events every time, we, every time we have a card. This one is one of those cards that from top to bottom is built to entertain. So if you're missing this, I don't know what else you're doing. I mean, I know I know it's Friday night, but listen, you went out on Wednesday on Valentine's Day. Now it's Friday. Watch our fights because you won't save some money. Stay in and watch the fights. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you spent well, we all, you already one. spent all your paycheck on Wednesday, so you might as well stay home on Friday. All right, we got a good one going here, but Chris, you are down by two, and insane, this is the fourth insane, round, which is insane to me. I don't understand. You need you need a big you need at least a knockdown here to get a draw. So Chris, but you are going to start. So come out swinging. This is another hypothetical one. Who is the most exciting fighter in the sport today, man or woman? Who's the most exciting fighter? Round four, Chris. You need a big one. Ring the bell. Start round four. Uh, that's a tough argument. So when you think about exciting fighters, you think about guys that entertain and that people are looking forward to seeing fight, right? So immediately it comes to mind is like Nayo Inoue, Arthur Peter Biev, uh, even Jaime Munguia, who's turning out to be a, a can't-miss guy who's so exciting. But excitement comes when you got those guys who live on the brink of failure on the brink of defeat you want you don't want the guy who's undefeated and scoring all the knockouts and winning easily all the time you want the, the back and forth the guy who's almost there pulling it out of the depths the depths of defeat and for me right now today that's lee wood lee wood is a bad mother sucker man and he will fight on the brink he he, he rides that line of destruction or or, or victory every single time he fights Missing that guy fighting, you're, you're, you're missing out because you're going to have to go back and watch it anyway because the fights are awesome. Um, you know, his comfort behind victories are, are insane. The fact that he came back from that far, terrible knockout loss to Lara, didn't come back and beat the guy. I mean, it's the Warrington fight. He's down, comes back. Break, break. All right, all right, all right. So you took my answer. You took my answer. All right, I'm, go, I'm going with Jaime Munguia. Jaime, have you ever seen a boring Jaime Munguia fight? Uh, honestly, have you? you the, the guy doesn't. The guy doesn't know what boring is. Consistently and constantly is in exciting fights. No matter who you put him in with, he's in back and forth fights. He gets hit. He hits. He throws in combination. He gets. He backs out straight up so he gets hit on the way out. Which you know is not good for him, but it's good for us to see. And then he comes back flying. He goes to the body very well. He just stopped Rod John Reiner, and he made a case for himself in the Canelo fight. He saw him, which means he's actually good too, on top of being exciting. Not that Lee Wood's not good, but Mungia is a guy who also generates that fan, that fanfare because he's Mexican and he fights in that Mexican boxing style, which obviously which obviously makes Mexicans love him. And then of course makes the rest of the boxing fans respect him more because they're like, well, if the Mexicans love him, we gotta love him because they know their fights. So Jaime Mungia, for me, most exciting fighter in the sport. You do you cannot tell me a boring Jaime Mungia fight. Break. Who, who's the most exciting fighter that we can think of in recent generations? Or Turo Gotti. Lee Wood is the English or Turo Gotti. He's the guy who comes back from the brink because he has heart, he has balls, he has will, and he has a punch. He scores KOs. He comes back and knocks guys out. Uh, the, fi the fight with Mick Conlon, that fight is insane. Go back and watch that. If anybody who hasn't seen that, watch his last four fights in a row. It, the, the guy is something else. And a little for the judges here, the guy used, Paulie just used my guy that I said wasn't the guy. So how, how does that how does that work? And he sounds pretty friendly right now. Break, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't know. It seems like someone is ahead of the sport. You can't name four guys that it's not. And then, they, who are you going to leave me with? You're going to take my pick, and then you're going to name another few guys that it's not. I got to take one of the other guys. I'm Mugia also gets late knockdown, seals the victory with Derby Vinchenko with late knockdowns. That's late, late fight dramatics as well. Okay, it's not late late knockouts when he's from, coming from behind, but he, he the fights are always in the, up in the air in this 12th round. He gets that knockdown against Derby Vinchenko. Oh, that's almost equivalent of a knockout. Lady, that seals the win for him. Again, There's he gets our Rosado fight. I was there. He's in a war. There's our bell. You know, I, I got to admire Chris's style. He just went like a shotgun, just threw out all these names. He threw out all these names just, just to start before he went to Lee <laughs> yeah. Wood. So I, I like your style. But Chris, I will say, I do disagree with you on one point. Mike Tyson, I thought in his pr prime in the 80s, he was the most exciting fighter in the sport. And he was knocking everyone, almost everyone out. But to me, it was just so exciting. It was must see TV. But Paulie, well, you know, that. heavyweights are different, man. Like heavyweights, like you, you, because like, anything can happen at any time. That's another thing about about heavyweights in general, because it's one punch. I don't care if you're right. Mike Tyson or not. Even his heyday, it's always like uh, you never know. But yeah, now the back and forth stuff. That's 
No, well, the reality about Tyson, there's like random spots where he's in his prime where he gets hurt. Like Tony Tucker oh, yeah. kind of hurt him. Yeah. Bone Tony Carson Tucker staggered him. Frank Bruno got his. <laughs> Even when he robbed Rockton guys, he's getting right. hurt in these fights. Well, yeah, Paulie, so it's pretty clear. It, it, it's pretty clear, Paulie, that you you know you lost that round because you started it by saying, "Oh, Lee Wood, that's my guy. That's who I would have." I mean, yeah. but, but but it's well, a question of how badly did you lose that round? That was pretty bad. Pretty Chris bad. won that round, ten nine. Oh, Paulie Malinaji. Get out, out of here. This, I, I, I'm willing to chalk that one up. I'm willing to chalk that one up. But Mungia was a good enough answer. It was and, a good, and I made a good enough point that I, I don't get knocked down. But it was Mungia, a good Mungia, Mungia was control. Like, he was frantic. He, he, I feel like he got out of off the canvas Mungia, as soon as I was done. He was fighting now, back If you want to take credit that you gave me the answer, wow. well, that's on you. Because you 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 can't even say who it's not. And All then right, they, guys. Well, that's what it might be. Wood is the guy. We're out of time. Yeah, we, we are out of time. I don't, I don't, I don't Yo, comments. Get in the comments. That was a 10 round. I won the other go round. First and then take their this answers. Is, Come we in. got a new chat. Set the order. order. We got a okay. new chat. I again. hope you guys are paying attention at home. Obviously, guys at home. It's, obviously, it's leaning one way. Know. We got a new champion in Pauli Mananaji. Make sure you subscribe. Go to YouTube. Subscribe. Send us your topics. And tell, tell us how the judging was. And tell us how Judge, much Chris I'm, Algieri complains. I'm throwing the book at you. Well, there you go. Chris is throwing the book at me. We got a new champion, Pauli Mananaji. Make sure you subscribe. Pro Box TV is your boxing channel.